Bill, welcome to the second part of our conversation again today. So I'd like to learn from you a bit about the buttress core structural system that you invented while designing the Burj Khalifa and what makes it unique and was there a study made between the buttress core system and the core walls coupled with mega structures with outriggers? Uh, well, let me ask, answer the second part of your question first. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate outriggers. Okay, uh, and, and so, uh, and it wouldn't it would not have been appropriate for, for this project in any case. It okay. would greatly slow down. It would, it would come uh, made the construction much more complex and much slower to build. And so that, yeah, uh, was I aware of the system? Absolutely. Have I used it on many buildings? Absolutely. Do I like it? No. Okay. <laughs> because there's great, like for the reasons I mentioned, uh, they're, yeah. they're difficult to build. They're they're, they're slow to build. And there's great uncertainty in the loads that are in the outriggers because of you know, reasons that they, I could go on and on about. Yeah. Uh, and so um, uh, when we, uh, prior to uh, the Burj Khalifa, we'd done a, to a tower uh, called uh, Tower Palace 3 in, in, uh, in Korea, which was a, it was a 90 story uh, building. It was vents for various um, reasons. It was never built higher than 72, but we, design a 90 story version of it and behaved very, very well. And uh, it was a three, it was a residential tower. It had three, three wings, which are a little bit um, more, more oval shaped. It had a different structural system than the Burj. Yeah. Uh, but, but that was our point of departure. Uh, we, we knew about that. Uh, and then, uh, then we started to design uh, the Burj Khalifa. Now, uh, when we, when we were designing it, first of all, um, uh, when, uh, when we won the competition, which was more of an ideas competition, we immediately went into the wind tunnel. Okay. And the building did not behave very well at all. It had uh, very large wind forces, very large motions. And so we we had to do some pretty radical reshaping of the building for wind regions and, and you know, the, uh, the structural systems. And also, as, as, it, as the design progressed, uh, and we, we looked at the demands or the type of building that, that they needed for this project in Dubai, uh, you know, the system that we, we had started with was, 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 no, was no longer the appropriate system. Okay. And, uh, and so uh, it, it evolved. And, and early, in, early in the design of a pro project, uh, it's probably good not to have uh, too much of, a, of, of a, a preconception of where you're going to end up because uh, you, you want to keep things loose and fluid for a while. Yeah, yeah. And, and as, as we worked in... Uh, through, the, through the, the layouts and the interiors and the structure and the architecture, uh, you know, it, it became uh, clear uh, that uh, number one is that um, uh, we were very concerned about torsion because of the, the, the three wings and, and that's what yeah. was issue. And, and we were able to convince ourselves that just a, a simple core around the, uh, the elevators uh, was sufficient to, to, to suppress the, the, the twist. And I have to say, you know, the designing that core was took a long time. The, the architects would propose a layout, and we would say it doesn't work for us, and we we would relay out the core and give it back to them. And they say, well, that doesn't work for us. And they <laughs> and so for weeks we were like, you know, we were, you know, playing ping pong with the core going back and forth. It took us forever to figure out how to fit the uh, the observation deck elevators into the core. Yeah. Uh, but, but eventually uh, we were able to, to get a core that worked for uh, both us architecturally, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and, and structurally. And, and so we were able to solve uh, you know, the torsion problem, but then the core was, was way too slender to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so through, through evolving and looking at it, uh, uh, you know, we ended up with, with the buttress core. But, but one of the things we did set early on is that we knew this was gonna be a very, um, challenging project and so we uh, we set ourselves some rules one was uh, uh stay on module okay yeah. module. And, and you know my, my firm is skidmore and zamero whose initials are som and, and yeah and one of the interior jokes is that you know stay on module. <laughs> stay on module <laughs> but really and so initially we had an eight meter module eventually we went to a nine meter module yeah. and, and so, so that you know, you couldn't have things happening just random willy nilly, or we would never have finished the design. Yeah. Uh, the rule that we had from day one is no transfers. Uh, th that uh, if you, uh, you know, as the building changes shape, 
the structure above sits on the structure below. Now it might be a column that's sitting on the walls, or it may not be the same element, but 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 the, the loads hit the structure below. So you're not trying to like you know you know put in some you know huge you know these are big forces you know yeah right? yeah some huge transfer system to 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 move the loads from because uh, that would that would have killed the construction uh, process and, and the behavior and yes. so. Uh, Wheel. So, so those are our two rules: stay on module and no transfers. Uh, and then uh, towards the end, when, when things are like starting to gel, and we knew we we had we knew we, we were there. Okay, we, and then uh, and then you know I was I thought about you know what is this? And so one of the things that I I I, I kind of uh, fell into this, but uh, what I do is is uh, at a certain point, I try to to give it a name or try to describe it in words. Okay. And, and and what I find, if it takes too many words to describe it, maybe you're not there yet. Okay. Maybe <laughs> you, it, it's 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 like editing also. Like if you yeah, if you write a, a report or a letter or something like that, or or even a, a short story. I mean, uh, your first draft, you got to edit it. You got to go back and, and change it and edit and edit. And 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 then this this reductive process of editing helps you get clarify your ideas and, and your systems and it applies very much to to design. So yeah, know, by the time we've done the editing uh, and, and we decided to describe what it is, you know, uh, it, it's it, it was the core. The core was essential part for the torsion that was absolutely essential, but it was buttressed by the three wings. And so so that's how uh, you know I came up with the name of, of the buttressed core. Okay, and, and the advantage of that is it really clarifies your thinking, which is important, yeah. and, and and it makes it clear to your the rest of your teammates, to the other disciplines, to the owner, to the contractor, and uh, and these tall buildings have a lot going on, and so there's you have conflicts all the time, and the question is who gets the right away? Well, guess what? The buttress core gets the right away. Okay? <laughs> and, and other systems have to work around it, and yes, and you know. And so, you know, that's, you know, it, it was very, very helpful uh, for, for the entire, the, the entire success of the project is having a clear idea that you could describe with very few words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if you had the opportunity to design the Buj Khalifa all over again in 2021, what changes would you make based on all your learnings from it and all the developments that have occurred in the past decade? Well, you know, um, you know, you always, when you build a project, you always see things you, you like to change. And that's, that's yeah. With life. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the Burj Khalifa was pretty simple. It was uh, some walls, some slabs, and a few columns. If I, if I were to do it again, I'd get rid of the columns. Uh, you know, the, the problem with columns is that they slow down your construction process. Uh, yes. Because you, generally, the way the construction process works, you have a column, you've got a slab, a column. Yes. A slab. Uh, but if you have well, it's just walls and slabs, the walls can generally uh, fly, go, go ahead of, of the slabs, and they have enough stability. And, and then the slabs have to catch up, but, they, but they're not tied to each other. And you don't have, and so, you save a complete day per floor uh, yes. you know, on your construction se sequence. So that's, that's one. I, and it also probably simplified the spire a bit. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's quite logical, but I think I could, I could, if I had more time, I'd probably simplify the spire a bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So according to you, which has been the most challenging project that you have worked on and why was it more challenging than others? I'll give you a couple of projects. One was a, a, a not very tall building here in the Chicago suburbs where we had a bad contractor, okay? <laughs> and, and, you know, the Burj Khalifa was like one of the most, the, the smoothest projects I ever had because, you know, uh, you know, the contractor group of Samsung, B6, and, and AirTech, yeah. uh, you know, they had a, a big group in Seoul that was looking at, down the pike and so uh, everything, all the issues were identified way in advance. They were resolved way in advance. And, and then we, we got time to build that element. Yeah. It was fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was this one contractor in the suburbs couldn't couldn't build a straight building. And, uh, and so that, <laughs> that was a very good challenge. But from a more technical point, there was another building here in Chicago. It was, it was a 20 story, 27 story building. Not that okay. Building, okay. But it's fairly slender. 
and, and so, you know, and I was, a, it was one of my first projects where I was a project engineer uh, very early. And so I was kind of doing it all. And uh, it has some, uh, and I learned a great deal about stability and second order effects and, and, and the like. Uh, you know, this is way, this is before we had the, some of the computational power we have now. And there were some very important papers written by Bill LeMessure in the American Institute of Steel Construction, uh, the, this, the journal, uh, the engineering journal of the American Institute okay. of, of, of Steel Construction. And, um, and, uh, and these papers kind of uh, were, were like very fundamental. And I actually uh, um, called up Bill LeMessure, who was, you know, the, the senior engineer of another firm, or one of our competitors, if you will. And he was, and he spent hours with me, you know, explaining what he was doing and, and the like. And, and that's a lot of what our profession is, you know. Um, I, yeah. think, uh, I think structural engineers are, are pretty generous to each other, okay? Yes, yes. And the ones who are, are not are pretty rare and um, it does not help them, let me say that, okay? Uh, you know, you know uh, being generous to your, your, I don't, you know, I think the, the term uh, competitor is, is incorrect. You're, you're colleagues in other firms, okay? Yeah. Uh, is, 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 is an aspect I think that is generally true within our industry. Profession. Yeah. yeah. Bill, I'd like you to run through your imagination and talk to us about an imaginary structure or system or concept or technology. Anything that comes to your mind that your desire could be designed or built in the future? Uh, actually, that doesn't really interest me because uh, for me, <laughs> the design is a search for constraints. Uh, you, you know, and 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 you're constrained by, um, you know, uh, by by the site, the usage. What what is the building? Is it a bridge? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, what kind of uh, building is a residential, hotel, office? Is it all? You know, is it is it a manufacturing? You know, and, and and I think the richness comes and the inventiveness comes from from the constraints. And one of the constraints I really like a lot is a tight budget, yeah. uh, because uh, if you have a tight budget, you have to be clever. Yes, you, you can't throw material at it. You, you got to you 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 you've got to you got to really sharpen your pencil and, and do your best and, and be and um, and which is one of the reasons I kind of like working in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, and Chicago is uh, a lot of times considered to be the the, uh, the the American capital of architecture. And guess what? The rents are pretty low here. And yes. So so so, uh, so the structures have to be pretty efficient because if they're not, the building doesn't happen. Yes. Uh, and, and 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 so you have some really clean, uh, rational architecture here. And, uh, and, 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 but clever, you know, to be unique or different when you don't have much money, you have to be more, uh, you have to be more creative. And so, yeah, uh, so that's, that's a constraint that, that I, that I welcome. Great thought. Great thought. So that brings us to the end of our conversation for today on the show, Bill. Thank you very much, Bill, for taking out your valuable time, sharing your experiences and your paramount contribution to our industry. I hope you enjoyed being a part of the show as well would you like to share any of your final thoughts with our audience and the young engineers well well uh yeah uh, well thank you for for putting this together i think this is a good thing for the for the profession uh for for the young people um through the for the students you know my uh recommendation is uh, one of the most uh, uh, practical things out there is theory yes. uh you know uh, if you're going to create something that hasn't been done before. You're not going to look it up in a book, but 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 the the, the engineer mechanics and, and and the theories and the behavior behavior materials, knowing about materials and uh, knowing about failures in the past uh, are are very important. So so uh, while in school, take as much theory as you can if you want to be a, be an important designer, because because yes. then you'll 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 have the t the tool set that you need. Uh, for, for, for your entire career, you know, like a, a building code has the has the shelf life of a banana. Yeah. You know, I can't tell you how many building codes I've been through, or different building codes from around the world. Yeah, but but, but, but the engineering mechanics and, and strength materials and the physics, 
that doesn't change. Yes. So, yes. So, so if you can uh, try, try to learn as much of that as you as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching this video. Make sure you like, share, and comment your thoughts on this video. Type in any question that you would like to ask in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to this channel to help us grow our structural engineering community. See you all in the next episode soon. Thank you so much, Bill. Sure. Glad to do it.